So in this latest video we'll be looking at function machines. A function machine is a series of maths operations done in a particular order. They involve having some starting values which are what we call input values, completing each instruction in the order given to produce an answer which is what we call the output values. Now as each instruction is separate to the next it is important to recognize that bid mask does not apply. So for example here if our input value was let's say 3 then here we do 3 times 2 plus 5 and then we would square the particular value. Now generally speaking if you think about bid mask it doesn't really apply but if you were to get confused then you might be tempted to do the square first because it bid mask squares come first or powers I say come first then multiplying and then we add. However in a function machine we must do it in the order of which we have given the instruction. So here our first instruction so let me just get rid of these numbers here. So this box from our input is our first instruction that we do. Then plus 5 is our second instruction and our third instruction is to square the values. Now if you are doing this on a calculator then one thing I strongly would recommend that you do is to press equals in between each of the values and then perform the operation. So here what we'll do is we do 3 times, so let me just get a different colour pen and we can have a go at this particular question. So here I'm going to start with 3, so let's say our input is 3, and a three an input value would be basically given to you. So we do 3 times 2 which would give me 6, then we would add 5 which gives me 11, and then we would do 11 squared which gives me a final input of 121, and that would be my output value. Now in most questions you will be given either input values where you start with that number and go through each instruction to find their relative output values. So here we could have something that looks like this. So let's have a look at some starting values. Now I'm going to have a range of let's say nice small numbers which will both slightly appear on a um, non-calculated paper. We could also have some negative values and we could also generally have some decimal values as well. Now for this what I'm going to do is now usually with a function machine this arrow belongs and so this would be the answer to number when I input 3 in. So I'm going to do 3 times 4 which is 12 plus 7 which is 19. Now I'm going to use a different colour pen so let's go for yellow. So this time I'm going to use um, minus 5 as my input. So minus 5 times 4 gives me minus 20 and then minus 20 plus 7 gives me minus 13. And then finally for my third value let's go for blue so here I'm going to do 2.5 so I'm going to do 2.5 times 4 which is going to give me 10 and then 10 plus 7 which gives me a final answer of 17 so it's important that in order the how the input values are given in the order we need to make sure that we're writing our answers in the same way so the first number is the first number on the output the second number in the input is the second number on the output and so forth now another common question is when you are given the output values and you need to calculate the input values. Now as this is the reverse of the arrows and the machine you need to do the opposite calculation in the reverse order. So in other words if we're going from the input to the output then what we do is we follow the arrows, we follow the instructions and we get the output. So here we're going from left to right. However if you're going from the output to the input then what we're doing is we're going working from left to right and as we're going against the arrows we need to do the opposite of these boxes. So here the opposite of adding 6 would be to plus 6 and the opposite of to adding 4 would be to take away 4. So if I was to create a function option of going in the opposite direction then that is what I would then need to do. So for example let's start off with some output values. I'm just going to make these up. So let's go for 13 minus 8 and let's go for uh, 1.5. So for this what we're going to do is to get now the value for 13 if the output is 13 then I need to put that in this top arrow here. So what we do to get from 13 is I'm going to follow these instructions in yellow as you can see below. So I've got 13 let's just get the pen so here I'm going to start off with 13 I'm going to do the opposite of adding 6, uh, taking away 6 which is to plus 6 which gives me 19 and then I'm going to take away 4 which gives me an answer of 15. Then to work out this section, second option, so here I'm going to start with minus 8. 
So here I'm going to do minus 8 plus 6 and then take away 4. So minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2 and then minus 2 take away 4 is minus 6. And then for the next one here what I'm going to do is, let's just get another box sorted. So here I'm going to do minus, start off with 1.5 and I'm going to add 6 which gives me 7.5 and then I'm going to take away 4 which gives me 3.5 and there is my final answer. Now it's always important that you again work through by pressing equals before you work on to the option regardless of which direction you are going. So here what I would do is I'm going from the output to the input then I would add 6, press equals or work it out in my head and then with that answer I would then do the, uh, the takeaway 4 which would therefore give me my input. Now sometimes you may be given uh, both the input and the output values and you need to work out what the actual missing instruction is. So in other words what the function machine is actually needs to be. So in this particular example here we've just got a completely empty box. Now this empty box represents one instruction. So I can't use a multiple of instructions it's just going to be one instruction only. So what I need to do is think to myself okay if I'm starting with my input is 4 which is what I'm going to start with so that's my starting value and my output is 16 which is my end value I think to myself what can I do to 4 to make 16 in one simple instruction well here there's quite a number of things I could actually do I can add so if I add to 16 then what I need to do is work out what do we need to add to 4 to get 16 well that's going to be plus 12 so that's one possible option I could go for Another alternative option is I could, uh, I can't take away because I'm going for a bigger number because I don't want to start ne minusing a negative number because then it defeats the object and two minuses make a plus so don't really want to go for that. So I can then think about multiplying. So can I multiply 4 to get 16? Well yes because I can multiply by 4 so that's another option I could go for. Um, dividing is going to be a little bit difficult because again I could divide by a negative uh, a decimal answer so that is a possible option so I could do 4 divided by 16 which is a quarter so in theory I could divide by 0 0.25 which is one option and then another option I could do is to square because I noticed that 4 squared gives me 16 so that's another option that I could go for so any of these four possible answers I could write inside my function machine would get me from 4 to give me 16. Now if a box is empty there may be multiple correct answers so any of those four coloured questions would be absolutely fine. However in some cases, and let me just get rid of that double in, there we go. And in, however in some cases an operator may be given to you so, it, uh, so you must use that. So in this particular question here I've got from minus 4 which is my input, so let me just quickly write input and I've got output value of 26. Now I've got to add so that's the only operation I can use so for this because it's adding usually that's not quite relatively quite simple so all I've got to do is start with minus 4 and use my imagine my number line or just count using my fingers what I need to add to get to 26. So again usually speaking that should be relatively quite straightforward in which you'd have your final answer of plus 30. Now in some cases it might be a little bit difficult, so for example what happens if the answer was, let's say, let's get rid of that plus, let's say it was multiplying, how would you go about doing that? Now if you're not too sure then you can follow this instruction here, now it's a little bit more complicated and I would say if you could try and learn this and appreciate it as more common sense then that should be absolutely fine. Now if you are struggling to find what this missing value is and they give you an operation which they've given me here as an example of a multiplying, then what you need to do is take the output value which is 26, I'm going to reverse the operation that they've given me in the function machine, so the opposite of multiplying is to divide, and I'm going to divide that by the input value which in this case is minus 4. And what I'm then going to do is try and work that out, so either with the use of a calculator or doing some basic division we get a final answer of minus 6.5. So here if I multiply minus 4 by minus 6.5 then that would give me an answer of 26.
So now let's have a look at some complicated high level questions related to function machines involving multiple boxes. Now here the question is asking us to complete the function machine and it says that missing numbers are all positive integers. Now that's really really important that we acknowledge. So positive which basically means we can't use negative numbers inside the box. Although we can have negative answers we can't use negative numbers inside the boxes. And integers is just a more mathematical word for whole numbers. So in other words, we can't use decimal numbers. So looking at this, let's have a look at our first question. So I'm starting with an input of 3 and I'm getting an output of 18. And what I need to do to 3 is I need to add it to a particular number. Then I need to multiply the answer and hopefully it gives me an answer of 18. Now to try and gauge an, an idea of what this is, let me just get rid of these so I've got a bit more space. Now, because our last step of multi is multiplying to get 18, what I'm going to try and do here is think about what are the factors of 18. Well, factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. So what I need to do is when I get to this stage, I need one of these numbers. Now, because obviously I'm starting off with 3 and I'm adding, it's going to be impossible for me to get 1 and 2 because again my answer needs to be positive because there isn't a positive number I can add to 3 to get either 1 or 2. So let's have a look at trying to get 3. So here at this stage I'm going to start with 3. So what plus 3 gives you 3? Well that's going to be add 0. And then once I've got 3, what times 3 gives you 18? That's going to be 6. So one possible answer I could have is plus 0 and multiplied by 6. Now personally I would opt for not choosing this particular answer even though it's correct is because adding 0 is pretty much doing absolutely nothing because when you add 0 you're not actually changing the value it's just kind of just a pointless thing to do. So I would particularly opt because what they're looking for is two distinct things you're doing and adding zero isn't really doing anything so I would pretty much opt for not choosing this option however it is correct so just bear that in mind. So let's have a look at another number so let me just cross out three and let's go for six. So what I need to try and do is what do you need to add to three to get six? Well I need to plus three. So, and then once I've got 6, I need to what times 6 gives me 18? Well, that's going to be multiplied by 3. So another answer I could give is plus 3 and multiplied by 3. And that, again, would give me 18, not a problem. So let's have a look at another answer. So let's have a look at another combination. So this time, let's go for 9. So what do you need to add to 3 to get 9? Well, I need to add 6. And then once I've got 9, what do you need to multiply 9 to get 18? Well, I need to multiply that by 2. So another possible answer I could have is plus 6 multiplied by 2. And again, that would give me another correct answer. And then finally, let's have a look at trying to get 18 as this middle number. So let me just get rid of those two. So this time we're going to have try and get a target of 18. So here, what do we need to add? to 3 to get 18, well I need to add 15 and then 18 times what gives me 18, well that's going to be multiplied by 1. So another option is plus 15 and then multiplied by 1. Now for this particular option, multiplying by 1 just like adding 0 is not doing anything. So it's pretty pointless of having that as part of a function machine. So personally I would opt not for choosing that option even though it is correct and also not opt for choosing um, plus zero and times by six even though again even though they are correct I would either go for this the red option or the yellow option as you can see on the screen. Now when it gets looking at question two so here we're starting with minus 10 and our first function is add 12. Now because we've given the first function what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work that out so minus 10 plus 12 gives me positive 2. So what I need to do is what times 2 gives me 18. So to do this, all I need to do is do the opposite. So 18 divided by 2 is going to give me 9. So my missing value I'm going to put here is 9, and that would be correct. Now looking at question 3, so here my second function is given to me, and so I need to work out what the first function is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards. So here I'm going to start with 24, and instead I'm going to add 6. 
I'm going to do the opposite. So 24 plus 6 gives me 30. So now what the question is asking is what do I need to get from 5 multiplied by what equals 30? And here your missing answer is going to be 6. Because so then 5 times 6 gives me 30. 30 take away 6 gives me an answer 24. So that there would be correct. So let's have a look at some example questions. So if you like, if you want to pause the video and have a go at these four questions, feel free to do so. And let's go through the answers. So for question one, this is a straightforward one because we're given the input. What we need to do is just follow the arrows and do what we're told. So here we've got five plus uh, five times four, which is 20, and then 20 plus nine gives me an answer of 29. And again, what I try and do is try and do it in steps to make your life a little bit easier. And again, if you're using a calculator, make sure you're pressing equals as soon as you've completed one block. So here we've got minus 21 plus 8, which gives me minus, uh, and it's going to give me minus 13. And then minus 13 take away 5 gives me minus 18. And then with question three, so here I've been given the output and I need to work out what the input is. So I need to do the opposite. So I'm going to do nine and do the opposite of add six, uh, which is take away six and the opposite of times by multiplied by two, which is divide by two. And that will give me the answer. So nine take away six equals three and three divided by two gives me an answer of 1.5 or three over two, whichever you prefer to give it as your final answer. And then with question four, Again, I'm trying to work out what this first block is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with 4. I'm going to do the opposite of add 8. So 4 plus 8 gives me an answer of 12. So then what I need to then do is 4 multiplied by what gives me 12. So how many 4s go into 12? And the answer, therefore, would be 3. Now let's have a look at some worded problems that you could get in these particular topic. So here it says that a bus has 12 passengers. At the first stop, 16 passengers get on and 4 get off the bus and the next stop half the passengers leave and 5 get on. How many passengers are on the bus heading to the third stop? Right, so at the start, now it's important that we set the work out rather than trying to do, although it is possible to do this in the head, it's important you try and make your life a little bit easier by writing things down. So at the start we have 12 passengers and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the instructions. So here it says at the first stop 16 passengers get on. So 16 get on what I'm going to do, that means I'm going to add 16. And it then says that 4 get off the bus, so I'm going to take away 4. So at the first stop, what have I got? Well, I'm going to do 12 plus 16, which is 28. Take away 4 gives me 24. Now at the next stop, it then says that half the passengers get off, so that's going to be divide by 2. And it then says that 5 get on. So what I'm then going to do is 24 divided by 2, which equals, and let's use a difficult pen, so I'm going to do 24 divided by 2, which is 12, and then 12 plus 5 gives me 17. So my final answer is going to be 17. So it just stresses the importance of writing things down, and you can see the links between this worded question and the operations of using function machines. So let's have a look at a, another example, another worded problem, I should say. So here it says, outside a football stadium, a queue is formed. So when the turnstiles open uh, in the space of 10 minutes, 120 fans are, or I'll say fans, are let in, and 65 join the queue. There are now 43 people in the queue. How many were in the queue before the turnstiles opened? So here, let's have a look at the original queue. So let me use difficult pen just so it's easier for you to see. So let's go for yellow. So here we're looking at the original or at the start. And what I've got is I've got at the end. Now, the 10 minutes doesn't really imply anything. So all we know is that it's been 10 minutes. This is what happens. But the value, the number of 10, isn't going to be used in terms of the answer for this. 
Now, what we know is at the end, we have 43 people. Now it says, going in the opposite order, so starting with 43, it says that 65 have joined, so that's going to be plus 65, and it says that 120 are let in, so that's going to be 100 minus 120, because obviously they've then gone inside and that's what it is. And so what it's looking for is what this original number is. So going in this direction, this is my function machine. So what I need to do is I need to do the opposite of what this is telling me. So I'm going to start with 43. I'm then going to do the opposite of adding 65, which is to take away 65. Then I'm going to do the opposite of subtracting 120 by adding 120. And hopefully that will give me the answer. So what I'm then going to do is give you 43 minus 65 plus 120. Again, I can either do that in my head or work it out. So 43 take away 65 is minus 22. And then add 120. So just do that's minus 22 plus 120 gives me an answer of 98. So my final answer is going to be that there were 98 people originally queuing up in the uh, for the, the football stadium. Now, a really good website for you to practice these questions on function machines is on the CIMT website. Now, when you if you click on it, I will attach this link so to save you from copying this up from your screen uh, in the description below. So, what I'd recommend that you do is to read through the explanation and the examples and answer the practice, uh, answer the practice questions, and then work through the task answering all the questions. Now, if you get an answer wrong, try not to click on "Tell me" because it will just kind of give you the answer straight away, and also lower your score at the end, which is which it will give you your markings and feedback uh, right at the bottom of the web page. So, if you do get a question wrong, have a go. Click on "Try." again and it should give you an opportunity to re-enter your answer. Now again in the description below I will include some worksheets to give you some practice and some, some general examples of what to expect on this topic in exam papers.